Hey, Assalamu Alaikum. Salam, Namaste. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on the country you are watching this stream right now, the wait is over. And uh, what a debunk entry it is. For the first sec five seconds of the stream, 120 odd people are already waiting. So this actually sets up the pace of, for about uh, what is expected. Uh, to come in the next two weeks. My name is Hisham Sabar, and uh, if you have bumped into this video by accident or surprisingly watching me for the first time, I'm a freelancer, I'm a tech entrepreneur, I'm a socialpreneur, I am an instructor, I'm a digital marketer, Last but not the least, I am a graphic designer. I started freelancing way back in 1997. And I assume majority of the audience who are watching this stream would probably, probably, they were not even born then. Uh, because when I look at the stats and audience of uh, demographics of my YouTube Being Guru 2.0 channel, surprisingly, 46% of the traffic comes from Pakistan. 54% of the traffic comes from the rest of the world. And the audience range between 17 to 22%. 68% of the people belong to that segment, which says a lot about youth. They are actually uh, curious to learn new things. And uh, therefore, I decided to do this cohort three in English. I've done actually previously, I've done two cohorts, one in English and one in Urdu. Both have been uh, a super duper hit. As a matter of fact, this new channel, Being Guru 2.0. I have hardly uploaded like, like 10 or 15 videos so far. But because I have conducted these live sessions teaching people about freelancing, digital marketing, social media marketing, the response has been so encouraging and so overwhelming that it has excited me and encouraged me to do it again. Now, since the audience is from, uh, you know, it's a diversified audience, the point was to do it in a language everybody can easily understand. So I'll be speaking slow. I will not be speaking fast. The idea is not only teach you about freelancing, digital marketing and blogging, but also educate you a bit about English because English is an international business language. If you want to make money on the internet, you have to understand English. That's about it. I would request everybody to like this video so that YouTube algorithm uh, promotes this video to the audience uh, who probably are uh, on YouTube right now. It's a free informative uh, knowledge I'm about to share, which is worth thousands of dollars and more. And by the end of second week, my pledge to you guys is, even if I'm not able to help you make your first dollar on the internet, at least I will broaden your knowledge, information about internet based businesses. This is my promise to you guys. And once this happens, you will start your career as a freelancer, just like the previous two cohorts uh, students have done. Not only they are working on the likes of marketplaces, the likes of Fiverr, Guru.com, Upwork.com, but also many of them have opened their blogs 
and also YouTube channel. The idea is amid COVID-19, since this is a parallel universe everybody is living in, if you are employed, there's a good chance you probably are working remotely. If you are a student, there's a good chance you are seeking education on the internet. If you are a, a budding freelancer, blogger, or a YouTuber, you are already spending your time on the internet as a beginner or as a seasoned pro. So this parallel universe, it is already out there. And it is about time we realize the importance of having our business on the internet. So just to give you a brief introduction about me, I started my freelancing career as an accident way back in 1997 and struggled my way, uh, you know, for the first couple of years. But then somehow I was able to come across a right marketplace where I was able to cement my place as a freelancer and make money. If you look at the screen, not many people get access to this valuable information, but I'm a freelancer who has made over 1.3 million US dollars. I started on guru.com in 2001, and that is what I was referring to. The first two years were pretty uh, you know, uh, there, there were hard times and I was struggling to cement my place and make a career as a freelancer. Uh, but there's a, you know, thought provoking information you see on your screen. I've done over 2,700 projects on guru.com alone. I have worked with over 525 employers. The largest of my client, and this highlights the importance of client retention, has paid me over 290K. And this client was only acquired six years back, by the way. And I've been using uh, Guru.com, previously known as IT Moonlighter. And uh, uh, it all started with a free membership and then I realized that since this is my bread and butter and I want to work as a freelancer and offer my services as a graphic designer, I started spending day and nights on guru.com and rest is history. You see the figure of 1.3 million just to put things in a correct perspective. I was an internet millionaire in 2012 exactly nine years ago and it only happened because I was able to learn a skill or two use people so they could assist me in my mission and then offer my services to different clients and uh, so far I've been self-employed for over two decades uh, even though there have been some days who have been uh, not relatively so good as compared to the uh, to, to the brightest days. But then this is internet business for you. Some days are good and some days are not so good. The reason why I showed you this screenshot was just to build a momentum and tell you what is about to come. For this whole week, starting uh, next uh, in the next five minutes, I think we have got good enough audience. 350 odd people are watching the stream now. And th for the next five days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and fr Friday, you are going to learn every single detail you ever wanted to know about freelancing. Who is a freelancer? Why you should choose freelancing? as you are active, as well as for your passive income. How can you learn skills? What are the types of freelance marketplaces? How to get orders from Fiverr? How to get a client's response on your proposal on traditional marketplaces, such as Upwork, Freelancer.com, PeoplePara.com, and Guru.com. Initially, I thought that I would uh, create a, you know, a, a separate 
Fiverr account and create five gigs right in front of you, maybe make it seven in the next five days so that you learn the whole keyword analysis, uh, how to identify your competition, and then how to create free graphics for your gigs that, that you know, create gigs the, the you know, the, such such gigs that are attractive enough to get an order from a client. But then I thought it would be very time consuming. So I'm going to create at least a couple of gigs on my existing account. I'm going to show you how an effective gig is created. I'm going to show you how to get uh, hopefully orders and clients uh, inbox messages inquiring about your service, how to set up your Fiverr profile. And most importantly, Alongside Fiverr, I'm going to teach you how to create your eye-catchy proposals. That is so hard to refuse. Yeah, I know. Jai Trandi Yogi. Now, before we jump into the freelancing um, formal education, I'm going to take uh, five minutes and educate you about the importance of learning a skill. I was an average student all my life. Someone who was a backbencher never showed any of the interest in uh, school and academics and never participated in, uh, you know, actively in academics, always was a sports geek who, who would spend times playing outdoor games and uh, loved, uh, you know, uh, sweating in the heat, sizzling heat of Punjab, 40 plus Celsius. But when it came to uh, studying, uh, that was something I was not comfortable with. Now, the thing is, as a creative artist, as a backbencher, I used to create sketches of my teachers. Now, when I would create the sketches of my favorite female teachers, sometimes those sketches were so uh, nicely created that I would gift uh, that sketch to my teacher, lady teacher, of course. Some liked it. Some would get exasperated and get offended. Why are you wasting your time and, you know, you won't get this time again in your life and get serious about your studies. I'm going to complain to your parents. Sometimes they would call my parents to my school and uh, boy, the next 24, 48 hours were terrible back home because uh, my parents, uh, you know, uh, like, like, like every parent, they want their children to excel in studies. They want their children to focus on education. But here I was more focused on playing outdoor games and creating sketches of uh, people I like the most rather than uh, focusing on my studies and spending time uh, and then, you know, going through different books. I hated biology. Needless to say, I hated maths. And surprisingly, I was not even good with, with chemistry as well. Uh, what are you left behind with is English and Urdu and I could, you know, somehow uh, sail through passing marks. Uh, my metric marks for most of you would come as a surprise. <laughs> I, I got 486 marks in metric in 1992. Looking back at all those years, fast forward. There's nothing I'm ashamed of because I personally believe this education system needs to evolve. It needs to be improved. It needs to identify your talent and based on your liking, based on your talent, uh, you, you, you should be taught uh, related subjects that resonate well with your liking, with your passion. 
and unfortunately our school system does not even go this far as a matter of fact it, it goes far away from uh, identifying a passion of a kid the school system does not teach you how to make money it does not teach you how to think creatively and the list goes on and on so no regrets uh, fast forward if i look back and connect the dots at the end of the day i'm able to uh, you know uh, survive on my own uh, i have people working with me and uh, people watch me to uh, you know um, seek knowledge uh, to get educated so all is well that ends up well but as a backbencher who was pretty good at in creating sketches when i was given an opportunity to provide my services on internet courtesy freelance marketplace back then we had elance.com and i you know as a graphic designer i started bidding on the projects but to my uh, you know hard luck i did not get a single response from any of the proposal i have you know i have, i would send to my my clients the reason why i was unable to get response and i identified this one year later the reason why i was unable to get response on my freelance proposals was because i terribly lacked at communication skills i was unable to convey my point of view across in a form of words in a form of selected words that would convince a client or an employer to talk to me as a freelancer on any of the freelance marketplace you can only send a proposal then it is up to client to see if your proposal is a perfect fit for their project and if they should hire you right and it makes sense as well because when a client puts a project on on let's say on upwork.com or on guru.com there would be hundreds and thousands of proposals it is absolutely impossible for a client to respond to every single message from a freelancer so therefore in order to avoid that hassle freelance marketplaces have only uh, allowed one way communication initially which means a client would be able to send a message to a freelancer not the other way around because if freelancers are allowed to send messages client would be bombarded with you know zillions of messages and everybody literally pleading employer and client to give um, them a chance and award them uh, with work so in order to avoid that hassle it's a one way communication initially and only if you are you know if a client sends you a message as a freelancer then you can converse back and forth which makes sense right so client would be talking to that particular freelancer or a different group of freelancers uh, they feel uh, could be a perfect fit for their project Now, since I was trying hard on elance.com, and perhaps the luck was not on my side, or maybe I lacked at communication skills, I initially, uh, immediately, uh, at very early stage of my freelance career, I realized the importance of learning communication skills. So that is where everybody needs to uh, step up the game here. If you want to become a successful freelancer, the first thing I want you to write on your notebook, and uh, uh, that's what I have been uh, requesting you for the last two days, that when I uh, come live, please write your notes. The first thing you want to learn here is not freelancing; it's actually your communication skills. If you are good at your communication skills, freelancing comes in secondary. it literally takes a second fiddle spot if you are able to convey your point of point of view across effectively if you are able to convince your client why you are a right 
fit for their job. You have done, you have literally done half of the, half of the task here, right? The reason why I say so is because clients only see how good you are in business development. They only see your communication skills. They only see your portfolio when you submit a proposal on their project. Once they award you the project, only then, few weeks later, they will get to know if you are actually good in getting that job done. If you are actually good in fulfilling the promise you initially made when you bid on the project. So logically it means freelancing and the freelance work comes very late in the equation. On forefront is your good communication skills. You need to assure your client and convince them why you are a perfect fit for this job. If I take you back to this uh, screenshot, you see, uh, that's my, uh, that's my uh, admin dashboard of guru.com. And this year so far, we have done 50K around and uh, all time transaction data. If I click on it, there you go, all time earnings. If I am able to complete these 2,768 projects successfully, the only reason why I'm able to do it is because of my communication skills. My freelancing skills can only be seen by a client once they award me a project and they see if I'm good at, uh, you know, getting a job done. I don't know why people are saying, uh, I've, I've seen, I've noticed three comments here saying the video is not clear. Is that, uh, yeah, net is slow. Okay. So it's Nilo, your net is slow here. That is why it might just be buffering for you. Maybe you would like to select a lower resolution of the video. So the first 22 minutes of this video, the point I've tried to, uh, you know, uh, emphasize here is if you want to become a successful freelancer, work on your communication skills. Now, how would you learn your communication skills? Book like these have taught me more than anything else. Not even my academic career of 16 years. Over a period of time, since I love reading about personal growth, I love reading about money. I love reading about success. I love reading biography of people. Famous books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, Hit Refresh, Think and Grow Rich, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by uh, Stephen R. Covey, and then his eighth habit. Uh, uh, and then watching big internet giants such as John Maxwell, Tony Robbins, Ty Lopez. This has actually taught me a lot. I understand one thing. 20 years later, I am 45 now. And I understand one thing 20 years later, when I initially started my freelancing career, that if you are good at your communication skills, if you are good in selection of words, if you are able to persuade your client to do business with you, you have gamed it. This is it. This is it. Nothing goes beyond uh, communication skills. Because even if down the road there is a miscommunication and it is bound to happen one day or another, even if there's a miscommunication, your good communication skill would come in handy and you'll be able to convince your client to not go in arbitration or perhaps open a dispute with you or cancel the project. As a freelancer, the biggest agony here is you have put in all the effort, you have done all the hard work only to find out 
that in the middle of the project, client is not happy because you are unable to understand what they are trying to achieve from a project. And then they end up canceling a project. That is where you lose money. That is where you lose your drive. And you do not want to lose your drive as a freelancer. Because if the drive is lost, if that passion somehow uh, diminishes over a period of time, that is where the worry begins to surface up. That is where you will uh, think about abandoning this field and choosing another field. But I tell you, in this new parallel universe we are actually living in, making money on internet has never been easy. Now, dare I say this because been there and done that, when I was surfacing up as an upcoming freelancer on different marketplaces, starting from guru.com, uh, whose screenshot you have just seen, and there you go again. I've worked on uh, Odesk. I've worked on freelancer.com. I've worked on peopleparar.com. I have worked uh, on, you know, I've actually got clients directly from my social media marketing, Facebook and Facebook-owned companies, Instagram and WhatsApp. Because direct clientele actually pays you at well. More on that later. Five days are uh, you know going to be worth spending your time uh, in getting you know unique information and acquiring absolute unique knowledge. But my point here is: start reading content that resonates well with your liking. If you are someone who is passionate about fashion, hey, by the way, all the ladies watching this session, happy Women's Day. Uh, the world would have been absolute in chaos and would have been incomplete without you folks. So I uh, uh, wanted to take a minute and, and express my gratitude here. Uh, honestly speaking, every day is a Women's Day. But if we are celebrating this day in particular, uh, so therefore uh, has to be acknowledged. Pick the content and start reading that particular content that resonates well with your liking. So if you're passionate about sports, read sports literature, read sports content. If you are, if you've got this flair about business and, uh, and then life and success and entrepreneurship, start reading content about business and entrepreneurship. The moment I started reading about business, it took me a little while to uh, form this habit of reading. Over a period of time, I realized how people have leveraged on the opportunities, lying idle for everybody to grab with both hands on the internet. People like Ty Lopez, Tony Robbins, John Maxwell, um, you know, they have taught me combined these three people alone. They have taught me more than, you know, my 16 years of academic education. And the reason why I say so is because when I read, uh, it opens my mind. And when it opens my mind, I explore new opportunities. Because consuming content is one thing. But after content consumption, executing is the major part. So I acquire myself with a befitting knowledge and education and then I am bold enough brave enough to execute the knowledge I have learned and acquired and actively actively uh, practically emphasize it sometimes with my practical experience uh, even with lack of exposure to that new field I have failed but most of the times it has been a roller coaster ride the joys of ups and downs, uh, that's, a, that's what the internet business is all about. So when you talk about freelancing, the first thing is, as we have established, you have to work on your communication skills. And I would request everybody to like this video. If you like the content so far in the first 30 minutes, I think I'm not requesting too much here, but gently pressing the like button and if you have not subscribed to my channel if you can gently subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon 
you will be notified whenever I come live. And for the next two weeks, I'm going to come live at the same dot o'clock, 9 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. Types of freelance marketplaces. There are two different types of freelance marketplaces. One is traditional freelance marketplaces and the other is non-traditional freelance marketplace. The screenshot you see right now, that's of a traditional freelance marketplace. It's called guru.com, right? And then there is another non-traditional freelance marketplace called fiverr.com so guru.com there you go i'm gonna type it again i'm already logged in and i've just received a message from a client so uh, you know i will have my team respond to these messages uh, we do around 50k a year and if you divide it into 12 months uh, that would roughly be around 4000 us dollars a month from guru.com alone uh, which which is pretty reasonable considering we are a Roger Federer of this marketplace who has been surviving uh, long enough, uh, you know, uh, to the point where most of the viewers who are watching this stream were not even born in 1997 and 98. So that says a lot about guru.com. Then the non-traditional marketplace is called fiverr.com. The difference between a traditional marketplace and a non-traditional marketplace, get your notepad ready, folks. On a traditional marketplace, just like we have established on guru.com, clients come in, they need a job done. For example, if I'm a client and I want a website to be developed, I would go to guru.com, upwork.com, peopleperr.com, and freelancer.com these are the four uh, top of the line freelance marketplaces traditional freelance marketplaces since i need a web development uh, project done i need a website uh, developed i would post a project explaining the details about uh, my requirement and when one when one you know when i explain the details about what I need to get done. You as a freelancer, if you are a web developer, you see a project and then you place your bid on my project. Now, based on your proposal, based on your price, based on the solution, based on your hard to refuse offer, I will accept your proposal. And even if I'm not uh, prepared to accept your proposal, at least I will initiate a conversation with you. And initiating a conversation from a client is first of the biggest task because as someone who has been doing it for two decades, I genuinely believe initiating a message uh, once a client sends you a message that's literally 50 percent of the job done because the rest of the 50 percent gets down to your good communication skills your good business development skills so you know encouraging your client to send you a message that is the biggest stumbling block in that biggest stumbling block that would open gateways that would make ways for uh, doing business on a marketplace how does that happen more on that later once we get to traditional marketplace but client comes in they post a project freelancer bids on the project that's the first part of it on a non-traditional freelance marketplace on a contrary it's a spin to the concept. So the spin to the concept, as you can see on the screen is freelancers. Let's just pick web development for a second. There you go, web programming. 
freelancers post their services clients come in they see different services commonly known as gigs these are all the gigs you see on your screen and if client likes a particular service again a gig they would send this freelancer a message and based on their initial conversation and agreeing on the price and a timeline a client then awards the project to a freelancer. So the spin to the concept means instead of freelancer bidding on a project, client picks a gig or a service and awards them a project. So in this case, most of the freelancers and therefore the reason why Fiverr has gained huge popularity because for freelancers to create an effective proposal and convince clients to send them a message or initiate a conversation and later award them a project, it's an uphill task. It's a difficult task. But for them to post their service on a shelf and uh, make their gig available in the marketplace so that a client comes in and they quickly browse through different gigs if they like your gig that's it they will send you a message or they can also award you the project so that my friend is the major difference between a traditional freelance marketplace and a non-traditional freelance marketplace a traditional freelance marketplace makes ways for freelancers to bid on the project whereas in the case of non-traditional freelance marketplace, which is Fiverr, freelancers post their gigs and then clients, if they like your thumbnail, if they like your price, if they like your description, if they like your previous orders or perhaps your portfolio, they will award you a project and then you will be required to meet a deadline. A deadline means that once a project is awarded, you have to complete that project within the allotted time frame. So, for example, if I say that I will complete a project inside one week, within one week, then I have to complete that particular project within one week. Does that make sense? If it does, I want you to type in I, A-Y-E. This is a term we are going to use very regularly in our conversations. For those who are worried about the duration of this class, every single class will consist of two hours, nine to 11. And uh, I fail to understand, I've just got started, 450 odd people are watching this stream. Why you are so worried about the duration of the class? So uh, Facebook is also traditional, yeah, absolutely. Now, since we have established the difference between a traditional freelance marketplace and a non-traditional freelance marketplace, we are going to uh, we are going a step further, and let's see what else we can establish here. The difference between a traditional marketplace and a non-traditional marketplace takes us a step further and highlights the importance of learning a skill because unless and until we learn a skill how can we offer our services as a freelancer that makes sense right no rocket science is needed to explore uh, the importance of having a skill set i oftenly uh, you know i commonly uh, re relate the example of having a skill set to uh, shop showcasing different products on their shelf. And the reason why I, you know, correlate these two examples is because imagine in a 40 Celsius sizzling heat around 2 p.m. in the afternoon, you are thirsty and you want to uh, buy a cold, 
bottle of water, perhaps a soft drink. You step in a shop. You open their fridge and you find out that the fridge is not working for the last six hours because there has been no electricity. You are thirsty. You need cold water to quench your thirst. Would you buy from that shop or you would step out and go to the shop next door and uh, see if they've got the product you are looking for. A cold bottle of water. Skill set is pretty much the same thing. Because if you do not have a befitting skill set, if you do not offer what client is looking for, how do you even expect a, your client or your potential client to buy your service or hire you for their job? You see, it's as simple as that. You have to acquire a skill set that is good enough to be showcased on the shelf for your potential client to buy it. What are those different skill sets? If you look back at the screen, and if I take you all the way to the top of the navigation, you see certain uh, services offered here. Graphic designing. When I move my mouse over graphic design tab, I see certain drop downs. Same goes for service um, that's next to graphic design, digital marketing. Again, a lot of sub services, writing and translation, video and animation, music and audio, programming and tech, then business and then lifestyle. You can explore all these different skill sets when you go on any of the freelance marketplace. Right now, I'm on Fiverr.com. You have to learn a skill that resonates well with your passion, something you are passionate about. Blessed are those whose profession is what they were passionate about when they were growing up. What does that mean? It means that if you are passionate about something and you are able to make money by offering that passion of yours as a profession, you are you're, you're going to make huge amount of money. And that's what I've done as a backbencher who was good enough in creating sketches of his teachers. I was able to transform my skill set of graphic designing into a virtual skill set of designing using computer aided software. And once I learned that skill, I was able to offer my services as a logo designer. I was able to offer my services as a web designer, as someone who could design bifold and trifold and catalog brochures. Absolutely, it was Wasif Ali Wasif Saab. So, if you want to choose a skill set, and I see a lot of messages in my group, learn freelancing with Hisham server, people inquiring about which skill pays you the most. And I humbly respond. It was never about skill. It was about how good you are in offering that skill. When it comes to a skill set, even a voiceover artist can make as good money as a software developer. Even a content writer can make as good money as a mobile app developer. How do you justify these two different skill sets? One is a technical problem solving skill where you are required to write tons of codes in order to arrive at a solution be it a website, be it a software or a mo mobile app. Whereas in a case of content writer or a story writer or a voiceover artist, uh, you know, it's all about being creative. It's all about you 
being so creative you know what one of the top 10 skills of world economic forum let me show you that in my screen give me a second and you guys will be surprised here so i own this blog called beingguru.com and i'm going to give you a link here as well there you go top 10 skills of 2025 and you'll be surprised to know why i emphasized over 25 minutes highlighting the importance of learning soft skills now you will understand where i was coming from so if i zoom in there you go and hold on for a second you'll get the link anyway analytical thinking and innovation active learning and learning strategies learning a skill complex problem solving if you can solve a problem you will make money critical thinking and analysis creativity originality technology use technology programming and here's the most important and the surprising part resilience stress tolerance flexibility and problem solving top 20 top 10 skills of world economic forum if you possess these skills if you are good at this particular skill set i show you you will be making huge amounts of money and you'll be successful in the near future right so now highlighting the importance of learning a skill my advice to you know all of you watching right now is or those who will watch this stream later focus on learning a tech skill the one you are most passionate about and at the same time learn soft skills if you look at the link i've just sent you and if you open this link uh, you will be surprised to see soft skills in demand they you know nobody ever talked about these soft skills we have been living in an education system that has been training us for a nine to five cubicle jobs our education system was created for industrial revolution in 1900 where we were trained to do jobs rather than think creatively think out of box think big think money now since the parallel universe is out there it's a universe of internet we understand that uh, learning a soft skill is a prerequisite if you want to become successful on the internet because if you learn creativity if you can think out of box if you can find a solution to a problem you are already in demand even before you realize and you'll be making huge amounts of money that's where the ceos that's where the future leaders belong to if you learn these skills you are a future ceo of a bigger huge organization and at the same time at the same time you probably are a leader of tomorrow because you can think creatively you are someone who can take an initiative you uh, long for originality you long for flexibility and most importantly you got the resilience and stress tolerance and flexibility which means that wherever you are sent to remember that movie martian where the guy goes to mars and his teammates come back uh, because of a dust storm and uh, he was left behind and then he learns how to survive on hostile environment of mars and not only he learns how to survive but because of his resilience and flexibility to the hostile environment he makes his way back to earth an amazing movie i would request everybody to watch martian it's an amazing movie i'm gonna type in the comment section as well so you want to learn a skill let's see where, where, where we can learn uh, different skills that 
you know uh, you are most passionate about don't go for skill that you think pays off well just because your friend is earning well if i made over 1.3 million dollar offering graphic designing mobile app services uh, content writing services it does not necessarily means that you should go for these three skill sets as well what if you are good at creativity what if you are good at storytelling what if you are good at uh, video editing and video animation what if you are good at uh, software development so go for the skill you are most passionate about now there we go the first site i would like you to write in your notebook is bitdegree.org i'm going to give you a link as well let me let's wait uh, as it loads so there's the link if you look at the comment section copy this link please now here you will see you can actually learn anything you want some courses are paid some courses are free but if you want to learn web designing you can learn it here if you want to learn html and css you can learn it here if you want to learn wordpress and web development you can learn it here if you want to learn drupal you can learn it here by the way it's a programming skill if you want to learn uh, game development you can learn it from here if you want to learn how to create a website or uh, learn six six sigma training program how to create a facebook chatbot learn php learn wordpress you name it and you will have it on bit degree i want you to enroll into a program by identifying your skill set and then signing up on bit degree right bit degree is pretty simple uh, all you need to do is just type in bit degree b i t d e g r e e and then uh, do whatever you want to do no i'm not here to debate about halal and haram but i don't see a problem with game development uh, don't go that way so that's one way of learning different skill set by going to bitdegree.com and then you can learn uh web development web designing drop shipping mobile app development and anything now let's just take a look at few of the websites and see if we can uh, gfx mentor if you want to learn graphic designing oh that's my other channel okay if you want to learn graphic designing you need to sign and subscribe to this channel gfx mentor imran is just like my elder brother and whatever i do on youtube is because of imran right so uh, uh gfx actually i'm on my being guru 2.0 so i'll have to search here about different things but gfx mentor is one important channel you would not want to miss out if you want to learn graphic designing go to gfx mentor click on his playlist and on in this playlist you will see different uh, uh you know uh, training material starting from adobe illustrator adobe photoshop adobe premium pro cc course and this guy is a genius uh if you want to learn artificial intelligence here's a website you may want to go and subscribe to unfortunately airschool.com is not free airschool.com uh, but it charges you a very nominal price one of the famous youtubers hba services also is teaching on airschool.com airschool.com for 5000 pakistani rupees you can learn in urdu you can learn different uh, skills here 
and uh, you can learn blogging you can learn artificial intelligence you can learn web development you can learn content writing you can learn how to create a good youtube channel and the list goes on and on i have already given you the link in the comment section right and then yeah i am about to teach graphic designing on my urdu channel not on this one um, this channel it might come just 6 months later but for now we will be doing graphic designing playlist on my main channel starting thursday actually so what are time to ask this question speaking about skill set internet is full of knowledge right you can learn how to create website and develop website create software algorithm game development from bitdegree.com you can learn uh, the same skills from airschool.com in urdu uh, airschool is paid by the way but 5000 is worth uh, spending for learning a skill <clears throat> and then for graphic designing don't think beyond imran ali dina gfx mentor is by far the best teacher to teach graphic designing period one minute tea break here so what have we established for you to become a good freelancer you have to learn your communication skills read literature that you know you are most passionate about about the content you like the most and then also see or watch youtube content about the same thing you are passionate about i watch a lot of uh, tyr lopez content i watch a lot of uh, uh, tony robbins content i watch uh, a, 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 you know a lot of youtubers i learn a lot from um, Imran Ali Dina from his channel GFX Mentor um, and many other YouTubers from 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 India as well from US. Uh, so pick and choose a channel where the content creator uh, you know is friendly enough and you like listening to them and you can spend hours after hours watching their content. Second thing we have established is. identify the marketplace where you want to work if you want to offer traditional services you need to go to upwork guru.com freelancer.com and peopleparr.com where you can see projects that uh, fit uh, with your skill set and then you know place your proposals on uh, on that particular project or if you do not like sending proposals go to fiverr.com and then create your gigs and then we talked about learning a skill from different websites we talked about bit degree we talk about air school we talked about gfx mentor where you can learn graphic designing and yes graphic designing is in urdu by the way my main channel is urdu so that's where i will teach uh, in urdu of course now let's just jump to fiverr thank you nara thank you nara this is a comment uh, that literally Uh, you know excites me to keep doing this as long as i have the last bit of energy left in me because if someone can listen me for hours it's a huge compliment fiber there you go fiber let's see what do we have here In the next 30 minutes you are going to learn how to identify your competition on fiber what do i mean by identifying your competitor by identifying your competitor i refer to the importance of knowing where to uh, how to identify keywords for your gigs and at the same time what do you need to do to rank your gig right So if you give me a minute uh I'll be back with you in a second. If you just give me a minute.
back with you. It was an important message. I, 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 I had to respond to that message. So, how do you identify your competition? The biggest mistake people make on Fiverr is they create a gig without identifying their competition. For example, if you are a content writer, so let's just search content writer for a second. For this particular keyword content writer, there's about 20,205 services already available on Fiverr. How do you even think about competing for this oversaturated keyword? This is the biggest mistake every freelancer makes. They come across my video about Fiverr. They get overexcited. They go to Fiverr. If they are a web developer, they will create a gig on web development. If they are a content writer, they will create a gig on content writing. If they are a graphic designer, they will create a gig on graphic design. And without identifying their competitor, their gig does not get ranked. And then they worry. And then they come to me. Tag me in my closed Facebook group. Learn freelancing with the Sham server. Sir, I have been trying to rank my gig for two months, not even a single order. Can you look at my my gig? And uh, more than often, the one biggest mistake I notice is they did not identify their competition. So if they did not identify their competition and thinking that they are good at content writing and create a gig about content writer without knowing that 20 K odd people have already ranked well, nobody is going to pay attention to their gig. So what's the alternate solution? Now in the next 20 minutes, as I said, we are going to learn how to create a gig where there is a competition of around in between 100 to 3,500 services only. Content writer is highly saturated. Let's see. What if we type in website content writer? I type in website content writer and to my surprise, the number is even bigger. Da, 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 46,000. So surely I cannot rank in this uh, saturated keyword. I have to come up with something alternative. I have to come up with something different. What can I do here? Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's come up with an alternative keyword. SEO content writer. SEO means search engine optimization. You know, uh, let's see how many of you know the process I am doing right now. What is this process called? I'm going to give you a shout out and print your name on the screen. If you know the process of this time taking drill. The process of identifying the competition. Any idea? Any idea? Let's see. Let's see. Keyword research is a commonly known as one. It is keyword research. Everybody understands it's a keyword research. What is the process called? Of course, I understand it is research. I'm talking about the process of this keyword research. And to my surprise, many of new users, 80-20 Pareto principle, Sharyar Ashad. Sharyar, where are you from? I assume are you from Pakistan? 80-20 Pareto principle. What does this mean? It means that you spend 80% of your time in 
identifying every single detail about the work you are about to do. So if I want to rank my gig, if I spent 80-20 Pareto principle focusing on research and analysis, identifying my comp competition, my competitors, identifying the keywords where I can easily get ranked, this 80-20 Pareto principle would help me go places in life not just as a freelancer, but also in all walks of life. I'm a big advocate of 80-20 principle because I would rather enjoy 80% of the fruit down the road when I spend 80% of my time at the beginning of a task. And logically, it makes sense as well. If you look at this content comment I have just pasted on YouTube. I want you to click on this link. Hit control D bookmark this link on your browser on your tab and then read it as we speak because if you understand 80 20 Pareto principle. I can assure you if you do freelancing if you do digital marketing if you do social media marketing or blogging you'll be successful because you are spending 80% of your time in research and analysis, knowing that once I do the correct research and analysis, and then I eventually execute the task in the future, I will yield 80% of the results by only working 20% of my time. So the 80-20 Pareto principle gets flipped in the long run. 80% time spent before initiating a task would result in 80% of the positive results expected with only 20% of work being done, which makes sense, right? Rather than you working 24-7, 365 days a week, only to find out that you did not spend your time in research and development when you were required to do it, which is actually daunting, which is a worry something, right? So go through 80-20 Pareto principle, bookmark this. It's an amazing principle. Whatever I have achieved in my life, folks, be it digital marketing, social media marketing, blogging, freelancing, my social entrepreneurship, as a digital influencer, as a social media influencer, as an instructor, all of that is because of 80-20 Pareto principle. Because once I do the research part right, they say if you want to master a skill, spend 10,000 hours in learning that particular skill. With internet evolution, that, that equation has changed. Now you do not need to spend 10,000 hours in mastering a skill. Instead, if you spend three weeks in analyzing and consuming a content you want to learn, you will learn that skill set because on internet, because of abundance of information on the internet, because of so many valuable contributions made to a particular subject, learning has just got easier. It's not just for uh, uh, someone belonging to a particular demographic presence, but it stands true for anybody, everybody, anywhere in the world. It's an amazing principle. And I want you guys to understand the importance of analyzing a task before actually initiating it. Because if you initiate a task without analyzing it, the chances are you will bump your head against the wall somewhere down the road. But in case, if you've done the analysis part right, 80-20 Pareto principle, success is all yours. You're going to be successful in the long run. Back to the screen now. Let's see how we analyze this. So we are brainstorming here, and we want to rank a gig of content writer. SEO content writer has got a competition of 42,700 people. So surely I cannot get ranked for this keyword. What else do we have? Let's take an idea from 
here's how you analyze it. Let's take an idea from the keywords of uh, given in the titles of other gigs. So let's just quickly scan through the keywords in, uh, in, in, in these gigs here. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have SEO content writer. Okay, makes sense. Uh, thank you, Dua. Really appreciate this. Okay. Now, if you guys can uh, focus on the analysis part, I'll be grateful. Stop commenting for a second, would you? This way you can clearly absorb and learn the concept of keyword analysis, right? So no more commenting for a little while till I ask you to <laughs> start chatting with one another. SEO content writer and article writer. How about this? SEO content writer and article writer. And article writer. So the competition has just got bigger, right? Oh, the competition has just got bigger, 77,000. Again, I have to brainstorm 100% unique content. Uh, I will write 100% unique content. Let's see. 33,000. Again, still a competition. Uh, write unique content. Write unique content. 28,000. Getting better. Yeah, getting better. Write unique content in 24 hours. Let's see, 10,000 getting better. It's, 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 it's focusing down to the competition. And ideally, I would like to bring it inside 3,000 services. Right now, it's, we have 10,000 services. And I would like to bring it down to 2,500 or even 3,000, right? Meanwhile, so, as I brainstorm the keyword, can you just hit like on this video, please? And if you are watching this for the first time, can you subscribe to my channel? I'll be grateful. Okay. Uh, write unique content of 1,000 words in 24 hours. What do we have? Oh, now it has got down and narrowed down to 5,531. Write unique. What if I remove the unique word here? Write content. And that's it. That's it. Bingo. We have gamed it, folks. Write content of 1,000 words in 24 hours. All the content writers watching this stream, there you go. Thank me later. We have... Courtesy 8020 Pareto principle, analyzing the keyword, we are able to come up with uh, a unique keyword, which is not only long tail, but also could help us in getting ranked for this amazing competition. Right? How about this? Sip of hot coffee. <laughs> I wondered. Let me finish it. Brainstorming is all you need, and you need to do it correctly. That is why I am so pushy and emphasize a lot on <laughs> 80 20 Pareto principle. Hey, Mark, where are you from? Okay, Hassan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Jai Grush. Uh, I, I, I'll talk about uh, raising the importance of uh, freelancing and how to overcome your procrastination. Uh, I, I'm going to come on that in a moment, but let me finish this gig creation part. It is very important because if I'm able to educate people about how to analyze their competition, courtesy 80-20 Pareto principle, and then create a gig. And if the gig gets ranked, and if they get an order, 
that's it. I've done my job. And now that just builds a momentum for the rest of the videos. Okay, so there you go. No, Ashir, if the service has only 25 services, I'm sorry, if a competition has only 25 services, you need to think twice because there are no buyers looking for that particular keyword. And if there are no buyers looking for a particular keyword, you are going to uh, waste your time by ranking for that particular keyword. Focus on a keyword that has over 500 uh, services competition and should not go beyond 3,500. Right now, we are able to identify a keyword that has only 2,764. Write content of 1,000 words in 24 hours. Now, I'm going to create a gig here right in front of you guys. So I click on my profile picture and then I switch my profile to buying and uh, uh, there you go now since I am uh, sorry switch to seller now since I'm switched as a seller I should be able to create a gig this is what you guys have been waiting for and it has come right in front of you in the very first video now only God knows what is next this is just the tip of the iceberg, folks. Good is, you know, a lot good is about to come. You are going to experience how to send effective proposals on the uh, traditional marketplaces, the likes of Guru, Upwork, Freelancer, and People Per Hour. And most importantly, we are going to learn communication skills. How do we do it? How do we write effective proposal? How do we write something that uh, catches the corner of someone's eye? We will learn this all in the upcoming video series. This is what, uh, you know, I promised you guys. So I'm about to create a gig. How do I create a gig? I need to sign up on Fiverr. Signing up on Fiverr is free. It does not require a dime. And then I need to click on create a gig. So I click on create a gig icon. And uh, that's where the magic happens. Since we have identified our competition since we know that the keyword we have selected could help us get ranked ASAP. We also know that we have applied 80-20 Pareto principle in identifying our competition and that falls, uh, you know, it's that the competition is narrowed down uh, to less than 3000 services. We are good to go. So the gig title, if you have noticed, I will is automatically written here. It is written by default. So you do not need to write I will because if I didn't write I will, it will just repeat the word here. So I will is, it all starts with I will, which means this is what I'm about to do. I will write content of thousand words in 24 hours. Good enough for a gig title, okay? So now I need to select category. Writing and translation is the parent category. And for subcategory, I need to uh, select a befitting response here that fits in with, well with writing and translation. So uh, as a content writer, you can write articles, you can write different blog posts. Uh, I and my partner own beingguru.com. So, you know, we write different blog posts on Being Guru. Uh, if you are into translation, of course, that falls inside translating and writing and translation. If you write a, uh, you know, a website, SEO content, um, product descriptions, book editing, resume writing, and the list goes on and on. Let me see what would be the best fit here. I'll write content of thousand words, uh, beta writing, script writing. Uh, so far, so far. Okay, okay, blog post. Articles and blog posts is the subcategory I have selected here. Now it is asking me for get, uh, for gig meta, metadata. 
and uh, I'm gonna write about business and finance recently I'm writing a lot about insurance so internet and technology so that's what I would choose okay what else language language is English of course here's another interesting thing you need to understand as a fiber specialist I'm gonna appear on my screen here there's a there's a very less competition on translation translation category if you can translate any content from English to your language maybe English to Hindi English to Urdu English to Arabic whatever you you know you do whatever language you have command in you can get your gig rank for for translation category because there's not much competition and at the same time you'll be able to receive a lot of orders I know many freelancers courtesy my group learn freelancing with Hisham server where people only offer translation services and uh, they're getting good orders on Fiverr so if you are good at translation it might just be a perfect gig skill set you want to offer on Fiverr profile now since we have selected a topic we have selected language what do we mean by tone uh, okay professional formal conversation uh, okay that's fine it only allows me to pick two article type new story and long form article and how to that's what it's a shame I could only select three here tags now tags part is very important tags mean you are supplying the keywords to Fiverr artificial intelligence bots I repeat tags means you are supplying keywords to Fiverr artificial intelligence commonly known as bots and once they pick these tags compare it with the title and description more on that later in the next slide they are able to rank your gig by applying their formula nobody knows that particular formula but we have established the keyword analysis part we understand that uh, if you focus on a keyword that has got less competition and if you include that keyword in your title if you include that keyword in your tags if you include that keyword in your description you are giving yourself a fair chance of getting rank for your business related keywords in this case if you look at the title the title is content of thousand words in 24 hours I need to supply this as a tag article writer here you go thousand words in 24 hours another tag content writer blog writer I can only supply five tags here so I still have chance to submit one more tag and I would go with uh, content writing which makes more sense so I have selected five tags here and I have already supplied all the necessary information and I'm gonna hit hit on save and continue button so the type tag list cannot contain tags with more than 20 characters thousand words in 24 hours is uh, article writing okay it makes sense let's see if it is approved and good to go seems like it is good to go and Fiverr takes me to the next page here what do I get here 
I need to choose my three different packages I am willing to offer on my gig. As you can see from the screen, basic means I would be charging a nominal price for something that can be delivered in, let's say, two days. Standard means the price goes higher and the time reduces. And therefore, the premium package means that I am charging an optimum price for something that can be delivered ASAP. So I'm going to go with these names here just for a discussion sake, basic, standard, uh, mid range and top of the line. Okay. Provide article within 24 hours. Provide articles SEO friendly within 24 hours. Not sure if it will allow me to put in the time slap here, but let's see. Provide article, provide two articles, SEO friendly in 24 hours. So now we have established basic difference between basic, standard and premium. I have to supply the delivery time. And of course, since it is 24 hours, all of them have to be given the same time slot here. Now about the revisions. For the basic one, I'm going to give one revision. For a standard one, I'm going to give four, three revisions. And for the premium one, I'm going to give, let's say, five revisions, right? Okay, that's it. Focus keyword and then topic research and all that stuff. I would for now see if I can live without them. So the basic is five. The mid range is 15 and the top of the line is 65. Huge difference, no? But let's see how it goes. Selecting your price is very important. Fast extra delivery, no, I would uncheck this. Uh, additional revision, I would uncheck this. Uh, so what happens if I uncheck these additional revisions? Uh, no, then nothing happens. Uh, reference and citations and topic research, I'm going to unselect all these for now. I'm going to click on save and continue. Let's see if it is good enough to go to the description part. And there we go, good enough to go to the description part. Now that's where the magic happens, folks. I need to write a description that inculcates the keywords I have supplied in the title as well as in the tag section. Does that make sense? If it does, drop in your eyes in the comment section because that's, that's the only encouragement I get when I get to know that Everybody is on the same page and they are following my instructions. Revisions means how many times you are willing to make changes in your work. Wow, wonderful. So many eyes here. Wonderful. So there we go, folks. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to, you know, finish this description here. I am a content writer who takes a lot of pride in writing SEO friendly articles that get that rank well on search engines predominantly Google. words within 24 hours right for blocks rights else forums 
social media websites and also for print media. With over 10 years of combined experience writing for different forums, I take love technology, insurance, legal, and internet business. That's it. I'm good to go here. Uh, I have not used, yes, I have used. I can write 1,000 words within 24 hours. I'm going to highlight this particular word here. Now, you must have noticed these red underlines here. I wonder if you have any idea about these red underlines. I'm going to look for your comments, and the one who comes up with the right answer, I'm going to give them a shout out and print their name on the screen for half a minute. Any idea about these red underlines you see on your screen? It looks like a teacher marking your mistakes here. Grammarly! So the first one is info to explore. Where are you from? Uh, if you can drop in your name and your country, that would be great. And by the way, many of you have uh, correctly answered Grammarly. Yes, it is Grammarly. Okay, so Fatima is from Pakistan, Info to Explore. Wonderful. Grammarly is a free widget you can install on your browser. And uh, by installing this free widget, you can allow Grammarly to identify your spelling mistakes. You also allow Grammarly to track the tone of your content, if it is active, if it is friendly, if it is passive tone. And uh, once you, you know, you're notified, you can make changes in your content. So let's see what do we have here. I am a content writer who takes a lot of pride in writing a SEO friendly. It has a hyphen in between and then a comma before N and then a comma before N. And if I look at the uh, context of my content, the tone of my content, it says that five out of five for friendly, four out of five for being confident, and three out of five for being optimistic. My experience has taught me that Grammarly throws optimistic errors because your tone has passive voice. So if you will convert your passive voice to active voice, all of a sudden you sound more optimistic. So let's see from a human point of view, what changes can I bring in the content I have supplied as a description of my gig. I'm a content writer who takes a lot of pride in writing SEO friendly articles. Okay, right. I write content that ranks Good on good in search engines for top 10 results. Top 10 results. Predominantly Google. Well, okay. Let's see if there's a change in the tone of our content here. It has reduced. So optimistic means I do not sound optimistic here. Now, if I have a pro version of Grammarly, I can, I can get all the suggestions of optimism here. But for now, since I am live, I am not going to spend my time and, you know, <laughs> 
and then uh, let's say not waste your time here but pay close attention to grammarly it's an amazing widget uh, as a content writer as a content writer I write for blogs for and also print media with over 10 years of combined experience I write for different forums. I love writing about topics such as stigma. Okay. If interested, send me a message. I look forward to your response and do business with you. Send me a message. Now, let's see. This is it. Uh, I'm not. Uh, uh, for your content writing job, for your content writing job. Right. So, looks good. 87 now, which means it, I, you know, I've improved. Well, I've improved. As Barack Obama says, I sound confident. And he says, that's what I do. So that's what I do. <laughs> So there you go. Uh, I'm going to add fact here. Uh, do you take orders directly? Fact means frequently asked questions. Uh, I will request you, and then answer is the answer a freelancer gives. Uh, I would request you to send me a message so we can uh, discuss your project details. Oh, project details. Send me a message. When will I learn? When will I learn? I'm going to add this. And uh, for now, one fact is enough. Um, and I'm going to hit save and continue button here. It's going to take me to the final page, which is by far the most challenging. No, it's not the final. It's the second last. Add new question. Uh, please message me first before placing an order so we can discuss your requirement in detail my atl of detail gosh was hungry i guess save and continue now it is going to take me to the final part where i have to put in the image or a video. That's where the fun happens. That's where the, 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 the real action takes place. We need to learn how to create free images, perhaps videos that can fit well for our gig on fiber. How do we do it? I'm going to take you to my another screen. I'm going to unshare this screen for a second. And uh, I'm going to share a screen here. I'm going to take you to an already open tab. Let's see what do we have 80 20 Pareto principle. And that's where we are going to learn how to create a free thumbnail for our Fiverr gig. Before, before we do it, the best way is to find out the size of our Fiverr thumbnail. So if I click on Fiverr thumbnail size, it says 550 by 370 pixels. Okay, note it. Now I go to canva.com. On canva.com, it's a free software, cloud based software, where I can create free images also create free video and upload it on my Fiverr gig. For now, I am only going to create a free image for our Fiverr gig. It is very easy to use. If I can use it, you can use it as well. So uh, talk about size, 550 by 370, right? So I click on create a design and then I click on custom size. 550 by 370, right? So click on 
commit button, create new design, it creates a canvas, and that's how canvas looks like. Good enough, huh? And it look at the artificial intelligence here. It automatically selects images that fit well for the size I have provided. I'm going to select something that resonates well with the service I offer as a content writer. Uh, maybe this one would be would be a good fit. This one would be a good fit. I'm going to change her picture with mine. Uh, and there you go. There you go. Just perfect fit here. I'm going to change the background color. Red. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not a red guy. Not someone who loves red anyway. So uh, I'm going to choose colors that uh, that are pretty close to my liking. And I would go with these blues and dark blues. I'm going to, OK. I'm going to select my, my gig title here, already opened in another tab. And I'm going to submit this. Paste this in the text section of this video. 1,000. Wow, amazing. 1,000. Words within 24 hours. Okay. Rest of the information seems to be irrelevant, so I'm going to delete it. I'm going to choose some elements here that probably uh, define my image better. How about an orange for this one? Just for a change. I'm going to increase the size of the word 1,000. And uh, let's see. And I'm also going to increase the font size and the scale of these words within 24 hours. I would probably go with some effects for this keyword 1000. Uh, maybe, yeah, this makes more sense. Just a bit of creative and artistic touch. And alongside this, I'm going to put in some elements that define content writing. How do I do it? I go to the left hand side, click on the elements. I search uh, writing. Let's see what pops up. There you go. Amazing writing, free elements I can use in my picture. This looks pretty, uh, pretty good, right? So I'm going to use this alongside uh, maybe a pen. A pen would also define my image better. Or did I just overkill it? Maybe. I think I have. So I'm going to delete the second element, and I'm only going to go with one. Thousand words. Now, here's the interesting part. The naming convention of an image or a video you upload on Fiverr needs to follow the keywords provided in the title and description, because that's how artificial intelligence that's how the bots of Fiverr are able to identify that what an image is all about. Fiverr cannot read an image, but Fiverr can read the name of the image because it's all provided in English, right? So the naming convention, the naming of, a, uh, of, of, of an image or a video, whatsoever the element is, it needs to be very close and similar to the keywords your title has. I hope it makes sense. In this case, the name of this picture is going to be 1,000 words in 24 hours. Now I click on the download button. I click on the PNG. PNG would probably be a little higher size, so I'm going to select JPG. Uh, and then I, I hit download button, and this JPEG image is downloaded in the downloads folder on my, de on, on my system. And that's about it. Nice created gig image. I need you to 
come back on the on the main slide and uh, let's see where do we have that main slide there you go i'm going to unshare the screen again unfortunately i cannot switch between tabs here pretty unfortunate uh, streamyard does not allow it but uh, it does not matter so now we are back on our last step of completing our gig and i'm going to supply and or provide or upload a photo for this gig and i'm going to select the image we have just created and i'm going to browse it it looks a perfect fit right now i can create two images here three i think and alongside these three images i can also create a video uh, i'm going to teach you how to create video starting next monday when we discuss digital marketing because uh, again using canva or any other resource i'll i'll look into it but you are definitely going to learn how to create free videos online without paying a single dime and getting a state of art video output drop in your eyes if you are excited about this so i've just uploaded thumbnail of my image and i hit save and continue button it takes me to the final uh, part of my 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 gig and uh, that's where the actual challenge is so you are almost there complete the following requirements to start selling let's make sure you are fully qualified to offer your services with the following checks i have to take this english skill test right I am not a US based citizen so uh I'm not a US based citizen so I click on no but uh, before I do it I have to take this test here so I click on take test let's see how it goes doing it real time folks if I fail don't tell anybody okay so test syllabus consists of conjunctions pronouns and I do not even know what are we talking about here being so long verbs and tenses conditional uh, <laughs> let's see how it goes pretty excited and nervous at the same time start test what do you guys think shall we go for it or uh, or skip it for another time because it is going to take a little while <laughs> for me to pass this test i really you know. I dare come on on camera for this one. Uh, here you can add your screenshots of your work in the gig sample. So imagine if you are a content writer, if you have got a gig for writing services, or you're a web developer, you can take a screenshot and put that in the gig image. That's how you do, right? So people are saying some of it's a mixed bag reaction. Some are asking me to skip it. and uh, some are asking me to go on but uh, you can't fail so we trust you blindly i can fail i can fail skip it no hada maybe i just quickly you know skim through this without worrying about uh, uh, the repercussions maybe i just quickly skim through it i mean nobody's going to punish me for 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 doing this no let's see let's see i'm going to click on start test now expert rating is a third party engine uh, that has provided fiber this with this particular text so there's an error ticket already used i don't know what's happening here maybe it's an old account and i've already created submitted a ticket for this i'm going to try it one more time start test ticket already created i don't know what is happening here i don't know what is happening here go back to fiber i go back to my gigs and uh one is in a draft so i click on this draft i click on this edit button and let's see what do we have here Control X, coming back on the mainframe. When I click Edit, it opened this this in a new tab. So I'll save and continue. Yeah, that's fine. What else? Save and continue. 
you can now offer buyer options up to 90 days go ahead and update your deck you can now offer buyer delivery options for up to 90 uh, save and continue then the description part that's nicely figured out save and continue then the fact part nicely done save and continue yeah i know you already have received a lot of information but still still let's see i want to actually attempt the test here then the gig image part that's taken care of safe and continue your gig will remain in draft mode until you complete the test please wait i won't retake the test i'm not afraid of undergoing that exam but only if you allow me to undergo that exam 40 minutes or whatever it is i don't care start test i hope it does not throw an error again come on come on you can do better thank you this is a protected test in order to keep it fair for all participants keep the results accurate you will not be able to leave the browser i don't care so what is happening here it has opened a new tab and uh, it seems like I'll have to unshare the screen and I am going to share another tab where I am supposed to go through this test. Okay, and that's fine. I'm not allowed to go away from this. Test. So I've only got 39 minutes. Fill in the car with the correct word or phrase when you are going to buy a new car. Okay, that's fine. That sounds easy. Hey, uh, can I zoom out for a minute to make it easy for me to quickly skim through all the pages? Uh, fill in the blanks with the correct word or phrase. You can't get published unless you write. Okay, that's fine. Fill in the blank. Okay. Jenny is so young that so yet she has accomplished. Yet. Okay, this is easy. When Dan was young, he dreamed of... I thought uh, 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 I, I'll reserve my comments here. If Rebecca had sent the replacement part of the copier, we had received it, we would receive it here. Okay, so that's a tricky one. Uh, if Rebecca had sent the replacement part for the copier, we had we would receive it. We would have received it yesterday. Okay. I'm going to give you are talking to because you are going I'm going to give you a talking to and you are going to listen which makes sense it is important to be honorable then t-h-a-n not t-h-e-n it's a comparison here I have nothing left okay I, I, I just overstepped here I have nothing in addition to say, I have nothing further to say. Okay. Pretty quick, huh? She arrived in the restaurant with a group of... She arrived <laughs> at the restaurant or in the restaurant. Help me here. She arrived at the restaurant. She arrived in the restaurant. At the restaurant. Okay. If you would have left earlier, we would have arrived on time. Okay, this was easy. During the haste, the thief rest of being caught. Sometimes it's dangerous to cook with. Huh? Sometimes it's dangerous to cook with. that heat what kind of trouble you have gotten into amanda is dash in the line for <laughs> next in the line for bathroom okay going easy huh we went to tour the campus night we are going to the tour next week okay russell doesn't usually work on weekends however he'll make an exception okay it was it was actually all though it was actually all though uh, 
I'll go with Howard anyway. Fill in the blanks with the correct word. Rogers then followed her and her daughter, Ada. Okay. Which one of the following sentences is punctuated correctly? Gosh, what am I doing here? You didn't finish. Okay, so now it's getting now it is getting down to punctuations and the sentences. Which of the following sentences is punctuated correctly? Okay, what else do we have here? And I've got the wrong tab open. I just realized. No. What is happening here? What is happening here? Give me a second here. No, I'm fine here. I thought I, I, I actually had a wrong tab opened here, but I'm fine here. It happens when I navigate away from the... I don't know. So when I move away from this tab, this happens, which is pretty sick. Huh. That's sick. Why would this happen? Why would this happen? Share screen. Give me a second. What has happened here? So it gave me a couple of warnings. And I was trying to, you know, navigate between uh, this tab as well as uh, the fiber. And, uh, okay, give me a second. I'm going to quickly go back to the test here. And if it is asking me to undergo all the process here, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. I'm not going to undergo that basic thing again. I mean, it's pretty, pretty basic. Uh, anybody can pass this test. So I'm clicking on save and continue. I know I, I, I don't have the screen open yet. I understand that. Because the reason why I do not have shared screen is because it, it has thrown me out for a strange reason. And let's see if I can continue from where I had left. Retake test. Maybe a fiber browser glitch or something. Not allow me to to click on that retake. Never mind. I'm short of time anyway. Two minutes to. I I switch between the tabs. It makes sense. I switch between the tabs, but uh, at the cost of uh, actually. So the the thing is, I'm not allowed to 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 leave the tabs, huh? That's what the condition is. <laughs> I'll try it tomorrow when I come. Next five days is for Fiverr anyway, Fiverr Guru and other marketplaces. So that's it. I'm going to stop for now. Same time tomorrow, 9 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. If you have not liked this video or if you've just arrived on my video, we are, yeah, it makes sense that it does not allow me to switch between tabs because then I can cheat, right? I can go to Google and I can search it. And I was switch. I switched the tab because I wanted to see that if I had this correct tab displayed to you guys, and if you guys are still interested in watching this, to my surprise, for two hours we have maintained the minimum of 350 real-time visitors. Uh, I tried to speak slowly. I think I was good on that front. I tried to explain as much as I best possibly could about freelancing, and uh, all is well. That ends up well. So tomorrow, I think they're gonna allow me again to undergo that test. So before we discuss other things, create another gig, uh, courtesy 80-20 Pareto principle. Uh, yeah, the idea was not to cheat, of course. I mean, it's a basic English for someone who is an MBA. I mean, that's, that's just penis, peanuts, absolutely. So for assignments, that's where I need your attention. I want you to see the description of this video. Hold on, before you guys leave, I want you to click on description of this video. That's the first thing. As a matter of fact, that's not just the first thing. There's a lot more to come. In this description, I have talked about Fiverr, and three links are given in Fiverr. I want you to create your, you know what? I want you to go through these three links, but after you have uh, read the content in these three different blog posts, 
the idea is to write an article in word the idea is to write an article in microsoft word because tomorrow i'm going to uh, i'm going to explain the importance of uh, having an account on blogger.com or medium.com uh, let's see let's see what else do we have here Here's another interesting thing we can do here. So I'm going to share my screen. If you give me a second, I'm going to share my screen here. Share screen, share screen, share screen, Chrome tab, cohort. There you go. This is a closed Facebook group I have created for the participants of this cohort three, which is going to take place for the next nine days. It was initially 10 days, but one day, uh, you know, uh, it, it just passed away a little too quickly. I'm surprised that uh, we have been able to hang on to this one. So uh, the name is Cohort 3, Being Guru 2.0 on YouTube. I am going to click on the home button. I'm going to copy this. I am going to give you the link here. Click on this link. If you're on Facebook, join this closed group because that's where the whole discussion takes place. Uh, many of you uh, who have joined me in this live stream uh, probably have come from this closed Facebook group. That's where we have been uh, you know, discussing. So whenever I want to come live, I will tell you in advance on, inside this closed Facebook group. And then inside this closed Facebook group, I am going to create a post drop your assignments here the idea is i want you to how would you do it how would you do it let's do it simple for this time for the first exercise i want to make it simple i want you to drop in a comment of uh, not more than three paragraphs talking about Fiverr. What have you learned tonight? What is the takeaway from the two hours long lecture? What about 80-20 Pareto principle? I want you to quickly skim through the three links I have provided in the description of the video. And after you have read the three links, I want you to write a three paragraph content in the comment section of this uh, this post, drop your assignments here. Let's see what you come up with. And if I like what I see, which definitely I will keep a close eye on. Uh, you guys are too quick to jump in here. 75. There you go. All of you are in. And uh, we had around 3,000 plus members joining this group, 3.6 precisely, but uh, the viewership of this live video was a little disappointing, not going beyond 500, but that's fine for the first day. So far, so good, no complaints. But I expect a bigger, better audience for the upcoming videos. This is your assignment. Click on the links in the description, read them, that this would not only teach you a lot about fiber, but also how to get orders from fiber. 80-20 Pareto principle, how to uh, create your gigs on fiber. Uh, so all that I have explained in two hours, you'll be able to understand uh, everything by going through these three links. And then I want you to create a three para long response and submit it inside the Facebook group. Does that make sense? Drop in your eyes before I leave. It's okay, even if you do not know English, Ikra, the idea is to teach you how to be confident enough in writing. The first step here is to install Grammarly widget and then start writing. Grammarly will automatically correct your spelling mistakes and also give you suggestions about, your, about the tone of your content. This is how you will learn. This is... This is why I'm doing all this exercise. The idea is to educate you about the importance of uh, writing. Because if you want to become a successful freelancer, you have to write. You have to write proposals. You have to write gigs, right? You have to communicate with clients. 
and then you have to write responses in the message board more than that later if you're a blogger you have to write if you're a content writer if you're a uh, social media marketer if you're a digital marketer whatever you do on the internet you have to write and you have to write in english so why be afraid of all this it's just the mental handicapness mental barrier and chains around your brain uh, you have surrounded yourself with if you start doing it over a period of time you'll get better at it so try your best don't give up don't be afraid of anything nobody's going to laugh at your english the idea is to train you for the internet parallel world so that you can make money i'm going to schedule the post for tomorrow tomorrow uh, for tomorrow class right now after this live session make sure uh, you join this close group and uh, i will paste the link of the live session uh, inside this close facebook group or if you have subscribed to my channel if you have not subscribed to the channel like this video subscribe to the channel gently press the bell icon so tomorrow when i'm live or when i set a uh, you know uh, when i schedule this video uh, upcoming video for tomorrow you can click on set reminder and when i'm live you get notified as simple as that love you all folks i'll see you guys tomorrow bye for now